For centuries, scholars and adventurers alike have searched for the elusive gate to the Garden of Eden, said to be the entrance to the mythical paradise where Adam and Eve once roamed. And now, many professors claim that they have finally found the Garden of Eden. But what is the evidence, and what secrets does it hold? Let's find out. Once upon a time, there was a perfect place known as the Garden of Eden called Paradise on Earth. This place was like no other. It was a magical paradise, and everything was in perfect harmony. Imagine a home without sickness, death, or hunger. Sounds too good to be true, right? But that was the reality of the Garden of Eden according to the Bible. The name Eden means place of pleasure and delight. It's a beautiful and peaceful name of Hebrew origin. Adam and Eve, the first humans, were the lucky ones chosen to tend and watch over this magnificent paradise. Can you imagine having that responsibility? But here's the catch. God forbade them from eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Sounds easy, right? Well, they didn't obey, leading to their expulsion from paradise. To ensure that no one else ate from the tree of life, which could have granted immortality, God put cherubim to guard the gate. Imagine having heavenly creatures guarding your garden. Talk about being extra. So, where might the Garden of Eden be located? Now, this is a multi-billion dollar question to which no one has a clear answer. However, today, we will be critically analyzing what we know and hopefully it will lead us to the unknown. Let's start with the rivers. Mind you, not just any rivers, but mystical rivers that flow from the heart of Eden itself. First up, we have the Chidekel River. This bad boy is none other than the famous Tigris River. Imagine standing on its banks, just like the great visionary Daniel did during his exile in Babylonia. Yes, folks, we're talking about modern-day Iraq. The Chidekel River, or Tigris as it's known today, adds that extra mystery to the Garden of Eden. Now, let's shift our attention to the mighty Perat River. The Perat is none other than the magnificent Euphrates River. Together with its partner, the Tigris, the Euphrates formed the cradle of civilization, the Fertile Crescent. These rivers were like the backbone of ancient times, defining borders and making history. Fun fact, the Euphrates River even played a role in God's promise to Abraham about the Promised Land. But wait, there's more. We also have the Pishon River. Some say it's the legendary Nile River, gushing forth and irrigating the land of Egypt like a never-ending source of life. Others claim it could be the mystical Ganges River, flowing through India and Bangladesh. Heck, there are even theories connecting it to the mighty Indus River. We may never know, but the Pishon River remains a tantalizing mystery shrouded in gold, crystal, and onyx stone. Last but not least, we have the enchanting Gichon River. Picture this, a river that encompasses all the land of Kush, often associated with Ethiopia. We're talking about none other than the Blue Nile. Starting from Lake Tana in Ethiopia, it joins forces with the White Nile in Sudan, forming a powerful river that flows to Egypt. It's a diverging force with numerous tributaries flowing through the land of Kush. But where exactly is this wondrous place? The Garden of Eden isn't just any old garden with a sign saying welcome to paradise. Oh no, my friends, it's much trickier than that. According to the ancient texts, four rivers flow forth from the garden, which we discussed earlier. But these rivers sometimes lead us to a different location. In fact, they slither in different directions. You've got the Euphrates and the Tigris flowing in the northeast like two old buddies. Then there's the Nile with its mighty branches meandering in the southwest. It's like a wild goose chase. The general consensus among scholars is that the Garden of Eden must be somewhere between the Nile and the Euphrates. So basically, a paradise sandwiched between two powerful rivers. Some even claim that it's exactly 32 degrees south of Jerusalem. But here's where things get really interesting. These rivers don't actually flow from a single source. It's like they're playing hide-and-seek with us mere mortals. One hypothesis contends that the river, in all its splendor, vanished beneath the surface at the garden's departure before emerging at four different places. But it even gets more mystical. The rivers are called four heads and not four branches. That means they're not just branches of the same river, but four separate river heads. It's like they each have their own personality and unique path to follow. Many scholars and Bible experts have long believed that the Garden of Eden was nestled in the ancient Mesopotamian region, now present-day Iraq. 
the land of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, where history runs deep and civilizations once thrived. It sure sounds like a promising candidate. However, when archaeologists excavated the area, they were met with a surprise of epic proportions in Morgan Freeman's The Story of God series, where he revealed the shocking truth in 2017. There's an 11,000-year-old site sandwiched between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The garden should be older than that, right? Now here's the twist. While the Bible mentions the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the landscape has changed slightly. Could it be that the geographical landmarks mentioned in the Bible have been altered over time? Well, hold that thought because there's another preposition for where the Garden of Eden is. Garden of Eden in Africa Based on the latest research, the Garden of Eden is most likely located in Botswana, a country in southern Africa. This might come as a surprise to many, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Scientists have discovered that all humans have ancestors that lived in Africa between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago, which means that this continent is the birthplace of humanity. The Makkadikadi wetlands were once home to a massive lake, twice the size of modern-day Lake Victoria. However, the area is now mostly a desert and salt pans. A team of global researchers used genetics, geology, and physics to map the bloodline and land, leading them to this groundbreaking discovery. This is the first time the location has been identified, said Professor Vanessa Hayes of the Garvin Institute of Medical Research in Australia. It has long been known that anatomically modern humans first emerged in Africa some 200,000 years ago, the speaker said. The precise site of our first ancestors' emergence and subsequent dispersion is still up for discussion. The precise site has just recently been determined. The Kalahari Desert, which covers much of Botswana, was once a wetland where early humans lived. The area was rich in vegetation and wildlife, making it the perfect place for Adam and Eve to thrive. Lake Makgadikadi, which spanned Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, was also located in this area. Or could the garden be in Armenia? While many have speculated its location, historical Armenia is another place that fits the biblical description perfectly. The four major rivers in historical Armenia, including the renowned Tigris and Euphrates from the Garden of Eden, have headwaters near the majestic Mount Ararat. It's no wonder that countless biblical scholars have placed the Garden of Eden right here. But it doesn't stop there. The ancient people of Mesopotamia, known for their wisdom, believed that the Armenian highlands were the very dwellings of the gods. Talk about an epic address. Even the flood, which played a pivotal role in human history, first abated in Armenia with the legendary dove finding solace in this sacred land. Old maps and theological records testify to Armenia's strong connection to the terrestrial paradise. It's a place where history, mythology, and spirituality intertwine, giving birth to an unparalleled sense of wonder. And let's not forget Lord Byron, the famous poet who immortalized Armenia's significance in his works, acknowledging it as the cradle of mankind. We are all aware that even a minor local flood can alter a river's direction, so just imagine the colossal impact of Noah's flood. It completely transformed the topography of the earth making it difficult to pinpoint the exact location of the original Tigris and Euphrates rivers associated with Eden. But here's where things get really interesting. Some daring theorists propose that the vast oil reserves in the Middle East are the remnants of the lushest organic materials from the Garden of Eden. Can you believe it? That black gold bubbling beneath the surface might just be the final trace of paradise itself. So, dear friends, we're left scratching and wondering if the Garden of Eden is in any of these locations or is truly lost to the sands of time. It may be time to consider other possibilities. After all, if the garden was indeed in Iraq or any of these locations, wouldn't someone have stumbled upon it by now? We've got archaeologists digging left and right without signifying that heavenly oasis. If you like this, remember to smash that subscribe button right now and check out the next video on your screen we've already prepared for you.